Good afternoon, my friends. I am here on the road in the truck to read my Christmas story, The Christmas Train. And I didn't want to miss my 12th Christmas story because now we are halfway through the Christmas stories. And this is called The Christmas Train. So let's find out about The Christmas Train. Do you have a train at your house? Have you ever ridden on the train? Well, let's find out about this Christmas tree. Let's see if I can do this. The times were those when many families were not earning for a lot for money, yet mother and dad, through some sacrifice, I am sure, presented to me on Christmas morning a beautiful train. You see the train in his hands? And there's mom and dad behind him sitting Let's see what else happens. For hours, I operated the transformer, watching the engine first pull its cars forward, then push, then backwards around the track. My tra tra new train went round and round with endless energy, and I never had to wind it up. That is a pretty cool looking train. Let's see what happens. Mother entered the living room and said to me that she had purchased a wind-up train for Mrs. Hanson's son, Mark, who lived down the street. Curious, I asked if I could see the train. Hmm. I don't know if he would want to have a wind-up train after having such a very cool train. The engine was short and blocky, not long and sleek like the nicer model I had received. However, I did take notice of an oil tanker um, car that was part of his um, inexpensive set. My train had such a car and I had no such car and I began to feel pangs of envy. Uh-oh don't want to have envy. I put up such a fuss that mother surrendered to my pleasing pleadings and handed me the oil tanker car. Oh no, now the neighbor boy is not going to have the oil tanker car. She said, if you need it more than Mark, you may take it. Do you think he needed that tanker car more than the little, other little boy Mark? I don't know about that. Let's see. I put the oil tanker with my train. Of course, my electric train with endless energy could endlessly pull the additional oil tanker. I felt pleased with the results. So he has an electric train and it's going around and around and it has the oil tanker too. He has everything. Soon afterward, let me see if I can do this. Soon afterward, mother invited me to, ac to accompany her to the Hansons' home. We gathered Mark's remaining cars and his wind-up engine and walked to his home down a near nearby lane. I'll never forget the look on Mark's face when he received his train. Oh, I bet he was excited because he probably really wanted a train, just like this little boy. Mark was a year or two older than I. He had never anticipated such a gift and was thrilled beyond words. He wound the key in his engine and was overjoyed as the engine in its cars plus a caboose went around the track. He was happy with what he had, the wind-up train. Just before we were about to leave, my mother wisely asked, what do you think of Mark's train, Tommy? When I looked up into her eyes, I felt a keen sense of guilt and became very much aware of my selfishness. I said to mother, wait, just a moment. I'll be right back. Where do you think he's gonna go? Hmm. As swiftly as my legs could carry me, I ran to our home. I sprang to the porch steps and burst through our front door. What do you think he's going home for? He's running so fast and he's going through the front door. Hmm, what do you think he's got in his hands? 
I picked up the old tanker car plus an additional car from my train set, flew down my porch steps and ran back down the lane to the Hansons' home. <gasps> what do you think he's going to do? Do you think he's going to be the kind friend? I joyfully said to Mark, we forgot to put two cars that belong to your train. I don't know who was the happiest, Mark or my mother. What I do know is that was the day when I felt in my heart that giving and re had replaced getting. So he learned that it was better to give than to get everything. So here's the two boys and they're playing with the train. Mark coupled the two extra cars to his set and placed them on his track. Do you want to um, stay and watch with me? He asked excitedly. I looked back at my mother who of course nodded her approval. I couldn't help but smile and say, sure. Now the two boys were playing together. I watched the wind-up engine make its labored way around the track and saw Mark's face beaming. I felt a supreme joy, difficult to describe and impossible to forget. The spirit of Christmas had filled my soul. So what did the little boy learn? He learned that it was better to give than to get. And he shared not only gave the tanker truck back to the wind-up train, but also an extra one. That made him feel so much better. So hopefully this Christmas you can remember that giving is better than getting. Even though it's fun to get, it's so much funner, more fun to give. And that's my Christmas story for today is the Christmas train. Hopefully you remember that it's better to give than to get. Have a great afternoon and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for joining.